So uh, thank you very much, Dr. Bansi, for having me here to speak on rather important subject of challenges in medical education in India. I think this has gained the prime importance and especially when nobody is talking about it and Dr. Bansi has given me time to talk about challenges and luckily I have 10 minutes more. I think the previous session finished uh, before time. So I will have, I think, 30 minutes to discuss important challenges in medical education. Next. Next slide, please. Next. So I always start my lecture by paying tributes to my late father, Comrade Dirtikash Gupta, my friend, Dr. Gurpreet Wander, who was instrumental in my academic pursuits and inculcating academics from the very first year of our MBBS. Next. And nothing is possible without family support. Next. So coming on to the topic disclosures, because of paucity of documentation in medical literature, this lecture is largely based on personal observations, experiences and interactions with various stakeholders and media reports. Some listeners might not agree with the pathetic state of our medical education, but I think their disagreement is certainly justified because they might not have been exposed to the actualities and realities of the prevailing deplorable state of medical education and that could be much worse in some of the medical institutes what I am going to describe or what I am going to discuss today. So there are no conflicts of interest. Next. India has one of the oldest and largest medical healthcare system as well as medical education system in the world. But it is still struggling with basic to fulfill the basic and needs of the society. Moreover, COVID-19 pandemic and Ukraine-Russia war has brought increased focus on challenges in medical education, opening a long dormant Pandora's box. And Dr. Bansi, you have given me opportunity to discuss this chapter, which is not being discussed openly. Medical education is expected to play an important role in achieving sustainable development goals and producing competent ethical healthcare professionals capable of providing universal, equitable, and effective healthcare services. Next. So, this is my observation that medical education in India is maybe on the verge of collapse or it has already collapsed. Next. Post COVID 19 and post Ukraine war, everyone, including the professional organizations and media, is becoming more and more sensitive about the role of medical education, except the government and National Medical Commission. You will find several media reports taking up the deficiencies in medical education or how we can improve medical education, but there is no step from the government or the National Medical Commission. Next. So there are several reports on uh, medical education post-Ukraine war, like doctors out of borders regulate fee to stop students exodus or dying to learn about medicine. Next. These are the media reports which are highlighting the importance of medical education. Next. So we are going to discuss challenges and medical education in India is facing numerous challenges, each requiring days of discussion. But we are going to briefly discuss a few rather important challenges today. Next. First and foremost, I think it is commercialization and privatization of medical education. Since 1990s, with opening up of medical colleges, more so private has led to the concept of buying medical seats rather than merit, leading to skyrocketing capitation fee and corruption in medical admissions. So till 1990s, it was only non-profit trusts which were allowed to open their medical colleges, but progressively the, uh, the conditions they decreased and more and more private medical education colleges came up. Next. 
private medical education even after establishment of nmc in 2020 remains very expensive and has become a market investment for the students major reform for nmc to regulate fee in about 50% of the private medical colleges in fact failed next so media reports were there highlighting the increase in course fee to mbbs to about 50 to 70 lakhs and for post graduation it is up from 1 crores to about 5 crores so that has led the fee increase because of commercialization of medical education next so we were not behind as health and human right experts we take up this issue of increase in medical education fee and we are working or fighting at all the fronts to impress upon the government to regulate the medical education fee but till now our efforts have been proved futile next next so these are the media reports only on july this july nmc issued a letter regarding guidelines for determining the fee and other charges in respect of 50% of seats in medical institutions and deemed universities but several media reports and editorials have reasoned why a more affordable mbbs education could be a pipe dream and you will be distressed to know that only 3 days back supreme court has issued notice to nmc that why the fee should be regulated in private medical colleges so i think there is inherent defect in nmc act that they can or cannot regulate the 50% of fee in private medical colleges equivalent to government medical colleges next so again several reports are there activist feel that that nmc fee plan for private medical colleges could face challenges if you go through the act they found certain defects by which nmc will not be able to regulate fee next so commercialization of education has affected the mentality of students making them more materialistic self centered without value of sacrifice or service to the country and affected the chances of poor brilliant students to become a doctor this has led to complete eradication of societal and humanitarian aspects of medical education converted into a very lucrative business so when you pay a fee of 1 crore how anyone can expect you to do service and not turn to take back the investment what you have done for medical education next on the other hand there are there is miserable neglect of public health care institutions confronting with low budget inferior infrastructure unable to keep up with pace of new development in medical services our public health care is in pathetic state numerous aims have been opened mindlessly and almost all are facing one or other type of problems more importantly there is no separate budget for medical education it is part of health budget and there is suspicion among experts that government's medical education funding may be further curtailed under private public partnership model affecting public medical education in future next so these are again various media reports and editorials highlight highlighting the importance of medical education that invest in healthcare not just in aims alone to booster healthcare government must allocate more budgets next so next important challenge which medical education face today is corruption corruption has different faces on private and public medical education system but the worst kind of gross corruption and unethical practices was encountered and also now also being encountered during mci and nnc inspections when bus loads of patients are mobilized to fill empty wards car loads of doctors are paraded before the inspectors the ghost faculty birth and death registers are manipulated instruments are hired or shifted between colleges and still private medical colleges 
managed to get MCI and NMC permissions under the influence of cash, kind, or political patronage. And this is an open secret. Next. Now, same things are happening under even NMC. Reports suggest that in spite of need, many private colleges charge under the table in addition to high fee for admissions. Worst type of corruption is passing the undeserving students, especially with gross, de grossly deficient attendance in lure of cash and kind. So this is, you know, experience and reports where faculty interact with you that whenever the candidates have deficient attendance, private medical colleges take extra money to fulfill their attendance requirement or pass the undeserving students. So this is the worst kind of corruption occurring in medical system today. Next. So again, these are the media reports where ghost faculty, PMC chief takes on the minister, but at the ground, nothing is, nothing much is happening. Next. So these are the dummy files from a ward. Next. Registers with dummy faculty. Next. So it is very important to mention that NMC and PMC has failed to act on especially my written complaints against the local private medical college at Bhatinda for in spite of undertaking in Honorable Punjab and Haryana High Court, so much so that now last week I have filed the contempt petition and High Court has accepted the contempt petition against the Punjab Medical Council. Several other aspects of corrupt practices can't be discussed here because of paucity of time. So I will skip some of the aspects next. So this is the media reports, the high court look into the issue of ghost teachers in medical institute. These are all media reports on my complaints. Next. So save medical education for ghost faculty media is highlighting, but uh, on actually NMC has failed to do this to curb the ghost faculty culture. Next. So role of regulators like NMC and state medical councils gains importance and their role is larger than life. Activists like me have questioned the role of MCI and the NMC ever since the inception of MCI in 1934 and replacement of MCI by NMC in 2019. In 2010, MCI was dissolved following the arrest of MCI president by CBI in a corruption case and submission by the parliamentary standing committee. Next. So no doubt converting 15 district hospitals into medical colleges is a welcome step. But who is going to, how on earth the government is going to provide much needed teaching faculty. So already there is more than 50% deficiency of teaching faculty in various government colleges and the private medical colleges fill that vacancies by host faculties or doctors on rent. Next. So but now reports suggest that private medical colleges continue to indulge in open and gross illegal and unethical practices as this recent report only last month where temporary doctors and during patients, the NMC gave go. Go ahead to five new colleges in, in Gujarat. So these are the recent reports even that NMC is failing or NMC is conniving with private medical colleges for recognition. Next. So again, a media report. That is why health activists like me are forced to think whether NMC replacing MCI was a good idea or could MCI would have been reformed to make it efficient and corruption free. This only time will tell. Next. NMC has miserably failed to act when a local private medical college is demanded enhanced P PG fee from PG students in spite of ongoing fee determination case in Honorable High Court. And when inhuman attendance guidelines were implemented for PGs, 
NMC then also failed to act on my written complaints, and NMC bill was supposed to be a revolutionary step, but NMC seems to have failed in almost all the objectives for which MCI was dissolved. Next. So this is the representation by the students and media reports about the dispute over tuition fee being charged from 21 students and more importantly, the state medical council as well as an NMC failed to act to protect the students' interests. Next. So that is what the powerful private education, private medical education mafia is like. So MDMS exams are delayed. And this was the message I got from NMC that it is the discretion of university. NMC has no power to intervene and NMC can issue only guidelines. So this is the pathetic state for NMC regulations. Next. State medical councils are mainly involved in registration of doctors awarding CME credit hours, but have failed to keep up with present post-COVID situation and frame guidelines for hybrid CMEs. And I have approached the Punjab State Medical Council, but they say that whenever NMC is going to frame the guidelines, only then we are going to frame the guidelines. In fact, they are independent bodies. They can frame the guidelines, but I don't know why they are shirking from escaping their responsibility for framing hybrid CME guidelines. Next. So this is the letters what I have received from Punjab Medical Council for hybrid CME guidelines. Next. So today also, the India Today exposed private medical college faculty faith that flouting MCI rules or similar things are happening under NMC also. Next. Next, please. Next, against NMC, next. So highlighting the medical education fee, next. So I think in a desperate effort for increasing medical seats, NMC is compromising on quality of medical education, skewed distribution of medical colleges, seriously compromising teaching and learning activities, and monitoring standards of admission, evaluation, facilities for teachers, adequacy and infrastructure is severely compromised. Next. So next challenge is disproportionate growth of regional imbalances of medical colleges and states. So almost 50% of the medical colleges are in five states. Next. So those five states are Karnataka, Maharashtra, UP, Tamil Nadu. And health experts explain that such regional imbalances are because of increasing political patronage and as commercial enterprises rather than service to the nation. Next. Next. So again, regional imbalances are because of the private, you know, commercial con Interest because PG medical seats are on sale for two crores. So these are all media reports. Next. So role of universities and colleges are very, very important. Where now personal et professional ethics based on Hippocratic oaths have been replaced by business ethics based on commercialization, may affecting the mentality of young doctors. Next. So there is rapid prolification of institutions with deemed university status and grossly deficient infrastructure and manpower and merely serve as commercial venues for giving degrees. Next. So this is a deemed university where the medical college was found to charge money and that was illegal and unethical practices in implementation of our Ayushman Bharat scheme. After even high court's notice, nothing has happened. Next. So again, corruption in medical colleges related to all these schemes. Next. 
Next. Next. So curriculum again is, is a very, very important challenge. Curriculum revision to competency-based UG curriculum stressing on medical ethics, doctor-patient relationship, and outcome-based learning is a welcome test step. But I think serious doubts that curriculum change will be able to train professionals, able to fulfill commitment, community needs, because the students will be learning under the hypnotizing influence of privatization and commercialization. Young doctors are increasingly adopting market private corporate initiatives under the pursuit to earn more money. Next. So these are the papers where you can see the curriculum change has not affected much. Splenomegaly of the liver. Next. So angina pectoris is severe burns. Next. Arteries and veins are atrial fibrillation. Next. So this is how a young doctor is checking blood pressure during examination. Final examination. Next. So poor internship supervision is again very, very important subject and proportionally now basically what is happening, the interns are joining coaching institutes to prepare for PG and super specialty entrance tests, severely compromising their internship training. So they are unable or they are unprepared to practice as primary care physicians. Next. Next. Shortage of clinical material is again an important challenge which is filled by the rented patients during inspections. Next. So these are the empty wards. Next. Rented patients like they have come to the wards like on a picnic. Next. Poor research activities. Most of the medical colleges add medical science and research to their name due to the administrative regions, but research activities are practically nil. And majority of the research is in the major institute like Ames, Delhi, PGA, Chandigarh or CMC Vellore. Next. 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 So when even when the NMC requirement of publication exists for the promotion of faculty, a unique way out was publishing in the paid journals. And next. So, but I think absence of any credit for research in selection of PG or DM courses discourage doctors to go for research rather than they spend time attending coaching classes. Next. So selection of medical students, one revolutionary measure of need, UG and PG would have gone a long way to rationalize medical college admissions but progressive decrease in UG and PG qualifying cutoff marks has opened a Pandora's box where percentile system has played havoc with magic, making very easy for wealthy low performers to buy seats. Next. 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 So these are the features highlighting how the MBBS seats are, how much percentage marks a student should get to get a MBBS seat. Next. 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 Shortage of medical teachers is again a you know very important factor which I've already discussed. Next. Next. So to sum up, my dear friends, challenges in medical education is different from public institutions, that is lack of funds and infrastructure, poor work environment and bureaucratic control, and private education system, it is excessive commercialization and increased illegal and unethical practices. Next. So this is going to impact on healthcare system. Since we are not talking about the impact on healthcare system, I will skip these few slides which are enumerating the impact on healthcare system. Next. So please rush through the slides. Next. 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 
next so these are all discussing what care there can be impact on healthcare system so present healthcare statistics prove that india has a long way to go before it can achieve universal healthcare or healthcare for all our healthcare system has become insensitive inequitable unaffordable apathetic to societal needs and we need to reform our medical education system next next so it is surprising that there is no shrill voice of professors or professional organizations lack of interest in problem of medical education and i must complete complement the api scientific committee to include this subject in 20 uh, 23 as well as to and dr bansi sabu to include this subject here also so the question will be asked are now are who will apply the brakes is there still time to stop and reverse and more importantly is there any political will to do so next so medical education should find a prime place and nobody has a right to commodify it which is being done very progressively in present times next so there should not be any confrontation between private and public but both should thrive together with more focus on public medical education than private medical education next so destroying education is destroying the destroying the nation so destroying medical education is going to destroy the nation's healthcare system that is what we are facing today next need of the r is to address the core challenges and pursue the inclusive medical education eliminating the coaching culture initiating health reforms designed to provide health for all with a focus on public health care and family medicine not neglecting the super specialties i think it is high time that our policy makers realize the serious challenges medical education is facing today and initiate revolutionary reforms before it is too late next Sir, just a reminder. This is the last slide. Okay, thanks. So this was report in today's Times of India, which I read, and I want to say that this is a beautiful article. That in India, the weakening of public health system and collapse of three-tier health system, combined with the rampant privatization of healthcare, has been disastrous, especially for the poor. India's obsession with quality of doctors. has resulted in opening a large number of colleges with poor facilities infrastructure inadequate patient load and not enough facilities faculty leading to thousands of very poorly trained doctors are being produced every year the on paper the number available to health system are constantly increasing but in reality in rural india there are two third of population lives the actual shortage of doctor and nurses remain under unaddressed so despite knowing well that doctors from urban background trained in tertiary centers located in big cities would be ill equipped and unwilling to face the challenges of working in rural areas the government continues to do that so my humble request to all the medical doctors who are listening today is to raise voice for reforms in medical education which is the need of the hour and without medical education we are going to have a disastrous healthcare system and our medical education is collapsing and we are there we should make efforts to save medical education in india next thank you very much and then i invite all of you to mapicon 2022 at bathinda next week thank you very much